Willkommen, bienvenue, and welcome back to Scrap Mechanic with Light. And today we're going to do a tutorial on the manual transmission car. And as you can see, this one's a bit sleeker than the uh, Spotlight video. Because that one was a bit overdesigned and unnecessary. We'll cover that in a bit. But this is a manual transmission uh, sports car type thing. I'm going to show you how to make the real body of it, the, the chassis. You can make it look however you like. But let's get started. So first, 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 you need to know the mechanics of how the manual transmission works. Because understanding is the key to being able to build this yourself. In any context you want. So what really matters is how bearings interact with each other when they're all powered. When they're when there's some that aren't powered, they'll just spin and spin and spin. But when they're all powered, they will maintain their relative positions. So when I push this button, this engine powers all three of them at the same speed. So you'd think all three of them would stay together and just spin, spin, spin. But no, it's the relative positioning and rotation that matters. So this first one will go at the speed the engine set at relative to this post, which won't move. The second one will move at that speed relative to this one, which is already spinning. So it'll go roughly twice as fast. Should be exactly twice as fast. I haven't tested whether it's exactly twice as fast. And then this third one moves at that speed relative to this one, which is relative to that one. So it keeps compounding more and more. So even though you've got three, it multiplies. So let's push the button. Pow. And there you go. So you can see they all come together. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Yeah. So if I were to count properly, do, 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 together. They all do come together. So it really is the same speed and then double and then quadruple. So it multiplies as it goes. That's a fact that we're going to particularly use for having more than just the number of gears as we have engines on our car. Because we're going to use this on the axle such that you can add each of the engines together. If you turn one of these off, like turn off the power, it'll just stay still and keep just the gears that are activated. Now over here I've got the overbuilt transmission that I had in that giant safari car. It's way more than you actually need. But it's more intuitive because you sit in the chair and you press forward and you go and you press back and it breaks. It's got the advantage that it feels more natural to your movement uh, such that you press W to hit the gas. You can hit S to ease off the gas and it's okay. So this bar right here symbolizes your throttle and then these are your gears which you can then turn off and disengage like so. So these are AND gates. So when both are active, uh, right, that's not connected. When both are active, you get a signal. If either one isn't active, you get nothing. And if both are not active, you get nothing. That is an AND gate. So I'll quickly show you how to make this simple AND gate. You take your bearing, you put it on the side of something solid that is not going to move. Then you grab your sensor. We're also going to need a controller. So you can put your sensor on the side of the bearing. Uh, Q, 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 Q. There it is. And then we duck down and put some material on the bottom of the sensor. Oh, which we can't because of the chair. Okay, so on the bottom, there, and then we take our controller and put it on the end just to save materials. Um, because you could use materials like metal here and then put the controller anywhere else, but I kind of like keeping it all together. And then you bind the controller to the bearing such that it stays in place, and then you set this controller uh, we're going to go with negative 45 to regular 45 because we want it down by default 
And then when it gets activated with Mr. Button, uh, that way, it goes up and is active. Then you just take the output from the sensor and send it to your engine, send your engine to your wheels, et voila, you have a functioning, completely overdesigned manual transmission. It's good if you want to stop suddenly and leave your gears engaged. Uh, for example, if we bind this up here, boom, it all stops without you having to know which gear you're in to stop it. Just in case you have to panic or something. So let's build this car. So we've got the sports car over here. We might use it for guidance every now and then. But for now, we'll grab this. We will need a five. Uh, let's see where we want to put. Let's put it like this. So one, two, three, four, five across. One, two, three, four deep on this side. Um, one, two, three, four. So it's five by eight for the basis of our chassis. Um, then up front, we're going to come, yeah, like, uh, I think I need to go one more. Yeah. And then we're going to bring it up and then we're going to bring it over like so. And then in underneath here, we're going to take a bearing. This is for our steering. Attach it to a pipe such that it can spin easily. And then our suspension. We're going to use a sporty suspension because it's a sporty car. Uh, we don't need a controller. Unfortunately, you can't attach the suspension to the bearings directly, so you have to have an intermediary block. Uh, then down here, we're going to use pipes for the sake of roundness and not running into things because the square blocks tend to bind up. Now, this is where we're going to use that concept. Bearing, pipe, two pipes, three pipes for four gears. One, two, three, four. And then we do the same thing on the other side. One pipe, two pipes, three pipes, done. Then we take our sporty wheels and put it on the outside. Sporty wheel, sporty wheel. Pretty sure that's accurate. I think we need to get rid of this block here. Hmm, I don't know. Is that there over here? It appears to be there over here, so We'll leave it. Okay, so we can bring it back down and now we're gonna put the back on. This side we're not gonna turn with, so uh, we can just bring it up and out. Pick it up on the jack, add on our suspension, add on a little bit of material to get out to the wheel, and then add our bearings. I'm using metal because I want it to be a nice heavy car such that it doesn't flip over. We're not going to have too much trouble with torque because we're going to be using electric engines instead of gas. The electric doesn't necessarily have the same top speed, but it's got so much torque you don't have to worry about the weight. Because we're going to have not only this shell, but we're going to have to throw a chassis on top. It'll work out pretty well. So this is our suspension and our steering pretty much done. Let's add ourselves the engine and the chair. So we're going to have four engines, three forward gears, and one reverse. So one, two, and then to match, we'll flip it around. One, two. Now, my personal preference for the gear settings is to have the forward and reverse on six, two, gear two on seven, and then gear three on eight. There we go. Then we take our chair and we put it away from us. 
Um, there. It's off center because it's odd and the chair is even. But that gives us room for our shifter. Which we can go one, two, three, skip one, four. Um, I don't like that. It's too far back. One, two, three, skip one, four. Uh, that way we've got number four here. This will be reverse. It's nice and separate from one, two, and three. Okie dokes. So now we need to bind things up. So we want one and four on the slow ones. We want two on this guy, we want three on that one. You can mix up these engines however you like, you can use the speeds however you like, and you can try gas. Gas engines will probably be okay, but they don't have as much influence when you've got m multiples in a line. The electric, because of the torque, help to do it a whole lot. They do push the speed pretty well. When you try to do it with gas, it, it doesn't have that much of an effect. So, we're gonna put reverse in the middle just such that we know where to find it. We'll put one on the ends and then bring the other two in. It, I don't think it matters, the order in which you put your gears. It shouldn't matter particularly. Um, wait a minute, that should be that one. Go over there. Like so. Then we're gonna attach this to there and swap it for the steering. And then we attach it to the buttons. One, two, three, and four. Let's double check our rotation up front. The middle should be going to the back. The others should be going forward. Middle to the back, the others going forward. Now we've got space here. This is a important thing to check. You don't want the engines too far up. They'll bind up your steering. That's good. We will check our buttons, make sure they're all bound up. That's good. Engines to there. Nothing in the back that freely spins. And I believe we should have a functioning manual transmission car. Oh, right. Remove the lift. And there we are. First gear is rather leisurely. If you want to take a stroll, just see the sights. Nothing too... Stressful's going on in gear one. Gear two kicks it up a notch. You've got somewhere to be, but you're not in any particular hurry. Gear three kicks it up into, yeah, you really need to get there. And with this suspension, you can go over all sorts of obstacles without too much worry. The weight will keep you fairly well grounded. The suspension keeps you from tipping over in a lot of situations. There's still plenty of ways to flip yourself over. Woohoo! Like so. But if you end up on your side, you'll almost always flip back over. It's only when you land square on your head that you're really going to have trouble. Now, let's open it up a little bit more because we can then add first gear to number three gives you a little boost and then you can even add second gear to that and this is the top speed of this vehicle it's not blazing fast but it's pretty quick for how stable it is that we can come up to a hill like this and not have too many worries about ending up on our face but alas sometimes you get a little stuck and you have to do a little fixing but that's our manual transmission car it doesn't need to be too much more complicated than that, and you just cancel the gears, and voila, you stop, and you can throw it into fourth to go backwards. Uh, the fourth gear, I've set as the same speed as first, but you don't necessarily need to. I mean, you could set it as second or third. You probably don't want to set it as third. Oh, can we get back from here? Uh, it doesn't look like we can get back from this. Um... You could set it to third, but that's a little quick. It's a little quick for what we need. But there you go. That is the manual transmission car. Let's hop into our sports car. You can make just about any sort of chassis on that body. I personally really enjoy this little uh, sports car look. And it's particularly interesting because the sports car can then go mountain climbing. 
because this suspension is pretty good with just about anything. It's got enough power to get up the hills. It's not going to go rock climbing. You can't just go straight up the mountain. But if you take the pads, you should be all set. Let's just give it a little test run up here. And if you only came for the tutorial, have yourself a great day. I'm just going to drive a little bit further just so you can see what it's like in multiple terrain types. Um, the trouble with this suspension is it's really bad at going straight on areas that aren't flat. It tends to lose its grip and then do things like that. So let's downshift a little. Try to get... Oh, let's just go down. Come on. You can do it, car. Down the hill. Hmm. Well, that's an interesting predicament to get yourself into. And, oh, it's so close to getting itself out of it. Um, because of the nature of my bumper, it doesn't really want to get out of this. So let's shift it into reverse. See if that helps. Oh, it's so close to helping. Alas! It doesn't really work, so we place it on the jack and just get going again. So if you got any questions about how the car works, if there's anything that you would want to see to make it even better, um, it doesn't exactly need jet propulsion, but you could certainly add it. There's plenty of room for it. Um, the main advantage of this over just having a static engine is if you don't really just want to go fast all the time, you can just decide to go, eh, let's take it a little easy. Um, it should be good for racing type situations. It's got fairly decent handling, except in rough uphill sorts of things like that mountain. And it runs a little bit awkward in there. Uh, and it doesn't really matter how fast you go, how it handles, because it stays on the ground for the most part. Um, the downward thrust that I added to the other model likely would cause more harm than good to this one, because uh, the, uh, the suspension is designed to bounce like it's bouncing, and if you remove the bounce by pushing it down, you're likely to cause more trouble than good. Uh, it doesn't cause too much lag, but when you've got multiple cars, this game isn't necessarily set up for several complex inventions at the same time. So we've seen it in this little washboard area. It handles itself nicely. It failed a little on the mountain, but it's all right on hills. It's all right at dodging trees. It can make it through cornfields, no trouble. At least as far as I know. No real trouble with corn. So, if you feel like using this in your game world, feel free to. If you make videos and include this prototype, feel free to link over to my channel, such that people can find the original. Um, oh, stuck on a tree. Whoop. And if there's any sort of invention that you'd like to see, that you don't expect me to necessarily think of on my own, feel free to leave that in the comment section, and I will see you in the next episode of Scrap Mechanic with Light. Boom! Oh, I didn't crash. <laughs>